If you're familiar with the longer running series on this channel, you're probably familiar with this old guy, a 1988 S10 Blazer that has been an ongoing project for the last six years. The biggest change made to it was pulling out the factory 4.3 liter to make room for a carbureted Chevy 350 V8. Neil, a friend of mine, has a similar story with his 1988 S10 pickup which has traded its 2.5 liter Iron Duke 4 cylinder for a Vortec 350. Two years ago, while still putting this truck together, I challenged his Blazer to a race. It took longer than expected to get everything set up and a Phytech fuel injection system to run the engine. Projects rarely go as you expect them to, but the trouble Neil has had with this supposedly reliable aftermarket electronic fuel injection system and the company that makes it go a little bit above and beyond that. There are a lot of benefits to electronic fuel injection, but for Neil, the system has just been more trouble than it's worth. This Holly Sniper system is what we're going to be replacing it with. This falls in a similar price range and has similar capabilities, but might work better than the Phytec unit. If it gets me 25 miles down the road and the manager from the company doesn't accuse me of slander, then Holly's really gonna come out on top with this comparison. Yeah, this story is gonna get a little bit weird. But for now, let's take a minute to do a quick rundown on the progress of this project so far. Neil bought this 1988 S10 for 500 bucks back in 2015, wanting to turn it into a unique hot rod truck. The roof was cut off, a roll bar was added, and a lot of customization was done to just about every corner of the truck. At the time, it had a 2.5 liter four-cylinder engine, and while it got the job done for a while, as most of us do, he wanted to go faster. In 2018, he got the chance to pull a 5.7 liter Vortex small block Chevy V8 out of a total GMT 400 Suburban. And from there he did a regasket, cleanup, and detailed refresh of the engine. For a transmission, Neil found a Camaro T5 and swapped it over to a S10 tail shaft housing to correctly locate the shifter in the cab. By January of 2020, he had most of what was needed in order to cram the combination into the pickup, so we worked at getting it all to play nicely together. The old 4.3 liter V6 engine from my Blazer ended up in his barn, which was fortunate because we needed to steal a few bolts off of it to complete the swap. With no small amount of effort, we got the engine and transmission sitting in the truck, modified the transmission crossmember to get the drivetrain located just right, and using a carburetor managed to get the engine running. Oh, <laughs> After some fiddling. But the carburetor wasn't the planned method of fuel delivery. He wanted it to be computer controlled and to accomplish this Neil chose a Phytech Go EFI standalone throttle body injection system. I purchased this unit in July of 2019 and it ended up being back ordered so I didn't receive it for several weeks. When it arrived, I noticed that the joystick was damaged, but since the unit was backordered and installation was anticipated to happen in short order, I didn't want to make a warranty claim early in case there were other issues discovered during installation. After all, I had one year to wire up the unit and look for problems. Installation of the Phytech unit was actually a breeze. I was able to do all of the wiring in one day by following the included instructions. I made all harness to vehicle connections using solder and heat shrink for a rock solid connection without any possibility of corrosion or moisture intrusion. The grounds between the Phytech and engine block were checked as well as grounds between the block and chassis. I selected an Aeromotive 11569 fuel pump which operates well within the maximum 25 amp current specified by Phytech support and is rated to supply 340 liters per hour, just like one of the pumps sold by Phytech for use with their system. This pump runs about 13 amps during normal operation, but can peak at up to 16 amps. During this entire experience, none of the inline fuses, including the one for the fuel pump, ever blew. The very first start on the system was a little bit iffy, but once we tinkered with a few things, including the timing, we got it running quite well.
And then the ground lit on fire. Yeah, I saw that. First time driving in two years. Let's see what happens. <laughs> there we go. Every once in a while, the truck would do something a little bit funny, but overall, Neil was happy with how the system was running and was able to drive the truck a few times, but this honeymoon phase did not last long. When problems began. The unit worked as expected when starting up and leaving the house but would not function at all after being shut off and heat soaking in a parking lot. Or after doing a higher RPM pull through all of the gears. One suspicion I had was the one wire alternator I selected for the project was unable to effectively regulate voltage, but a quick test at the auto parts store determined that it was functioning as intended and voltmeter readings never indicated any abnormalities in voltage. The first email I sent to support was on September 21st, 2021. There was a code for injector 3 and visual verification showed that injector 3 was not firing. After three days of back and forth, they asked for my information and on October 13th, just over three weeks from the initial contact, I did receive a replacement injector at no charge. I replaced the fuel injector and was able to drive the S10 several times, but still had issues with hot starts. The truck ran phenomenally once it was running though. On the last drive that the unit worked, the truck was idling perfectly and did a solid pull with no issues. But when coasting back down, the unit started acting up and could not find idle. The engine died and could not be restarted. I reset the tune using the handheld controller which allowed the engine to start, but it still could not find idle. I eventually managed to limp the truck home in second gear while feathering the clutch. This was all with under 20 total miles driven on the EFI system and less than two hours of idle time. After this, the system appeared to be stuck power cycling when the ignition was turned on. The fuel pump, injectors, and handheld controller would cycle on and off about once a second. The second contact with Phytech. I reached out to support once again on October 24th, 2021. After three days of emails, they asked for my info and I mailed the unit back to them at my expense. It was not clear from the email responses whether or not this would be a warranty repair. No response was received until I reached out asking for the status on November 18th. And on the 22nd, I received a response from the warranty department for a quote of $361 in parts and labor to repair the board. Included with the email were technician's notes stating that the unit was hooked to a test bench and found to be incapable of communicating with any handheld controller. They did not have replacement ECUs on hand and an ETA of four to six weeks was given to obtain one. I respectfully but firmly declined this charge on the grounds that it was nearly a new unit, asking that the unit be returned to me if the repair will not be covered. I made a social media post on my personal profile about the experience and tagged the company, stating that I sent it in for a defective board and got quoted for a repair. That same day, the warranty department came back offering to waive the $85 labor charge, but still wanted $276 for the replacement ECU. They also stated that the board had been recently redesigned and customers had been receiving these new boards as replacements for the past five months with no comebacks. Again, I told them that their price to replace a defective part was still too high and declined the repair. Following their response, I made an update post on my social media about the experience. The next day, the warranty department emails me back saying that they saw my social media posts 
bashing the company on my personal profile, implying that by doing this, I was in the wrong. There was no productive content in this email. On the following Monday, November 29th, a quality control manager emails me saying they will not warranty the product beyond the standard one year period from the date of purchase and will not extend the warranty on the ECU due to the install date and my post that slandered the company on social media. I asked once again to have the unit returned to me and the next day received confirmation that it would be. I made a request for details on what the actual failure of the board may have been and was informed that being that this system is not at our facility, I cannot verify the root cause of the issue. Apparently, the system never made it to the engineering department in all of its time there. On December 7th, a full five weeks after I sent the unit to Phytech, I received it only to find that the side cover is broken and a bolt is missing. Some closing notes. I really wanted to believe in this product. Back in 2018, I installed one on a clapped out 1979 Mercury Zephyr for a network TV show. That unit ran great. We took it to the drag strip the day after setting it up and had excellent results on the track. We had the unit on that car and this truck both running in only a couple hours of work. When it didn't run, which was unfortunately more often than not, I sunk hours of my valuable weekends into trying to figure out what was wrong. Despite being very vocal, yet composed, about my experience with Phytech over social media, I really think they could have diffused the situation and handled it a lot better. They accused me, in writing, of slandering their company image and did not seem to care if they retained me as a future customer or not. For those reasons, I think I will go with a Holly or Edelbrock product instead. See ya, Phytech. After all that, it shouldn't come as a surprise that both Neil and I are done with Phytech as a product and as a business. And yeah, companies have certainly done worse things than selling subpar products and providing poor customer service, but we both felt like this was a story worth sharing. And while Neil's S10 no longer has a Phytech fuel injection system, it's gonna need something. Which brings us all the way back to the beginning of the video and this Holly Sniper EFI system. There are a lot of similarities between the two, which should be helpful for swapping from one to the other. But -da 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 see, I got the fun color. I do like that. That actually matches the wheels. So I did take it out of the box once, but that's as far as I ever got with this. <laughs> I think this is... I'm sure it's the same. Ooh, it's slightly different. It has a different pin size. It's probably the same... Uh, I wouldn't have thought that. Phytech uses a GM one as well. That I will not change. Quick start manual. Sniper EFI installation instructions. I'm gonna need some help with the throttle linkage. I... What, what kind of bracket did you have on here before? Oh, I, I just zip tied it all. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, yeah, the wire coloring is all similar too, I think. This has a tack output. Yeah. That is interesting because someone said that their tack caused interference on their Phi tech on the group, and uh, their solution was to add a diode. So that's smart that they reroute it through the computer of the Holly. One of these should go straight to the Phi Tech. And of course, I very beautifully loomed all this up and then it died. And now we're going to take it all out. Ah, oh, that smell. That is the smell of success. I hope so. Who needs a perfect seal when you're pulling in gaps of air? I like that look better than the Phi Tech. That just feels like a better product. Like the natural amount of tension that should have. Um, I guess I'll hook the fuel lines up while I'm thinking of it. I think this this is return, should. right? Yeah, that's the outlet slash return on the regulator on your side there. So that's the same. That's good this system's set close enough that I don't think we have to replumb these. The install went quite smoothly and there were only minor changes that we had to make to the wiring. The O2 sensor, or at least its connector, is a little bit different, so we will be changing that out, but for now, just to get the thing started, we're going to be going without one. All right, should I uh, connect the battery? Incriminatingly long, positive battery <laughs> cable. <laughs> okay, now we look for the big spark and smoke. Yeah, the screen. Ooh, look at that. I'm gonna guess the wizard. Number of cylinders, eight. Engine displacement, 10. 10? <laughs> I assume this is in it must cubic, be cubic inches. inches. It's weird that it doesn't say, but it must be. Target idle speed, probably like 800. Cam mild. Power adder, none. RPM, stock cam sniper, start. Found the fountain. Hmm. Is there an SD card in there? Did it fall out? 
It's just the one that came with it. I never touched it. This is definitely not as easy as the Phytec in terms of the initial setup. Mm. But uh, let's let's try this again. Mm -hmm. Error. <laughs> what? The fuck? Uh, you want to see what's on that SD card? Cam type. Oh, we're definitely getting power. I don't have the tuning brain. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I gotta call some guy with a snapback hat to help me. <laughs> After answering questions, your calibration will be created. Well, there's stuff on it. Okay, well, ours doesn't do that, so. 1970. Third time's the charm? Mm-hmm. This is the original SD card. It just has files from the Holly website on it now. That oh, it's didn't doing do that before. Okay, something. it's updating. Oh. So now we're on to something. Remove SD. Reboot device. Oh, wow. Four injector, here yeah. we go. Number of cylinders, eight. You're getting really good at doing these though. So fast. Oh, look, it found a tune. A thing. The za. Ah. Fuel pump. Nice. Good noises. Hey, numbers. First turnkey, let's see what happens. Huh. Ready? Yep. I was like, oh, it's sparking, and then my eardrums blew out. <laughs> Ow. I bet it was trying to find idle. Well, that's good. I mean, it's, it's running good. Some things are working, definitely. Every time the engine started up, it sounded a little bit better, and pretty soon it seemed like the computer had figured everything out. Since the entire exhaust system on the truck is a set of very short headers, I wouldn't read too much into the flames coming out, and I assume the computer still has some tuning to do. Despite that, the engine seems happy and runs really strong. Well, we made it back. It, it's running a hundred times better than the Phytech. The Phytech, I would have had to stop twice and like get it to restart. It That's pulls pretty... really hard. Yeah. I say let's experiment, but I want to end tonight on a good note. <laughs> well, it still works, yeah. No problem. Do a video stuff and come outside and make sure the car's not on fire. There's a lot left to do on this truck, and a lot that didn't make it into this video. So if you want to hear the whole story, there's an entire video series on this project over on Neil's YouTube channel, Trip the Road. Episode 9 of that series goes hand in hand with this video, and not only is there more work on the truck that wasn't shown here, it also shows what happened to the Phytech unit after Neil got it back. See, after all that, he really wanted to know what was actually wrong. Look at that, that just broke. Barely glued in there. I mean, it is a thermal sensor, but still. You'll get way more details about it over there, but suffice to say, it's just made like crap. Here's the actual computer module from the system, and there it goes into a pot of boiling water. Ordinarily, you wouldn't even be able to see the circuit board because it's covered in layers of epoxy, but this hot water should help loosen all that up. And what Neil found underneath was some impressively poor construction. Almost all of the wires on the board are stripped way too far back, soldered poorly, and some of them seem like they were actually positioned very close to touching one another. Maybe they actually did. In fact, a shorted wire or bad joint is almost definitely what the problem with the unit was because after taking it apart, Neil was able to get it to power on. 
It makes you wonder if Phytech's redesigned ECU isn't just one that was assembled a little bit better. The fact that they didn't even try to figure out what the problem was suggests that they knew the problem or they just didn't care. Just the way it's often the nature of these things, there is every chance you could go out and buy one of these systems and never have a problem. And I'll say that when I called Phytech customer support to get some information on their fuel pump circuitry, which by the way isn't listed anywhere online or in the manual, the service rep I talked to was very nice and went out of his way to get me answers. So your mileage may vary, but take it as a cautionary tale because Neil is still out the 900 bucks that he spent on this system that, even if he resolders and reassembles it, is going to be difficult to trust. Let me put it this way, if somebody came to me asking if they should buy a Phytek system for their car, unless I really, really hated them, I would say no. Almost anything else would be better. Maybe even walking, actually. And my book report was on <laughs> <laughs> this Holly Sniper fuel injection system is what? Oh shit, that was too, <laughs> that was too much of a slam. I kind of have crazy eyes in there, but that'll be fine. Oh uh, this Phytech's making you crazy too, isn't it? Hopefully these lights have a teeth whitening effect. I had way too much coffee today. When problems began. Oh, the screen was still in there. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't have made it any worse. You put a high performance engine in S10 that looks like shit. Clearly you don't know what you're doing. You know, me and Barb were just gonna go to the uh, the Olive Garden in our blue 57 Chevy, which runs because I'm not a teenager with an S10. That's not a true American classic. There's no way you could have hooked that up right. In conclusion, I have lost my voice. Because I think I have between eight and ten cars. You want? So, somewhere. <laughs> you don't even know. It's not a definitive number. <laughs> Let's gather around the campfire and sing our campfire song. C-I-M-P-F-I-R-E-S-O-N-G -S song. Ooh, that's a dramatic light when you step in front of the light there. Come to the dark side. We have carburetors and AARP cards. <laughs> <laughs> Barb got me AAA. But I haven't had to use it yet because I hooked mine up right. <laughs> Some closing notes. In conclusion. In conclusion. The conclusion. Conclusion. See you later, Phytech. Hit the road. Synchronizing the departure of the Phytech unit. All right, ready? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you just realized that. Let's flip the hood prop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Oops. <laughs>